This is Hacking the Afterlife podcast with Jennifer Schaefer. Jennifer! Richard, how are you? (laughs) Great. It's always so funny when we get together because we're both like running 100 miles an hour in two completely different directions and then we stop until I say, Jennifer. I know. I know. Welcome day, to. Like, I couldn't wait. To, I'm so excited to be back at work. You know, not that I ever quit work because work seems to carry me through every single day. I'm doing something with work, but I'm true. Have you done? Have you done any of your uh, public events since we saw you last? Um, since you saw me last, <laughs> which is I think a week ago. No. Roughly last night, but that was with a bunch of friends. So I don't know if that counts. Oh, okay. Yes. Very good. Very good. Yeah. Um, and listen, look, let's just welcome our audience for the last time or the first time, whatever that is. Right. They're coming to our podcast where we hack the afterlife. Uh, whatever that means. I think it just means whatever we're, that means. And, you know, we're, we talk about the process of talking to loved ones on the flip side. We talk about grief. We talk about, and we have our friend Luana, pardon me, Lou, who is uh, our Jennifer on the flip side, who helps gather people together who may have come to talk to us. Now, let's ask Lou, um, do you have anybody on your list, your VIP list that wants to chat with us today? Or what do you want to talk about, Luana? Hold on. Let me get my little pad, my little... Your notebook where you write her name. Yes. (laughs) Luana. Okay. Luana Anders, who is my close friend who passed away in 1996. And Luana is on the flip side. And she was the one who dragged me kicking and screaming into this genre. And if it wasn't for her, we would have never met. Absolutely. And so when things happen that are really strange, that are really odd, you know, now I have somebody to blame <laughs> besides Jennifer. But, you know, I, when something happens like this where you meet somebody, and, I mean, look look at all the stuff that we've worked on and worked with over the past seven years. I mean, it's mind-bending. and It's crazy that it's been over seven years. And over seven, I think it's eight now. And so, you know, here we are. We're still talking to each other after eight years. We still do what we do, which is try to help people access their loved ones who are no longer on the planet and we do it to show you to show the audience demonstrate that it's not hard to do that anyone can do it you don't need to have someone like jennifer but it certainly helps as we demonstrate every week i think i mean they just show me me kicking someone like i think i give everybody just a little kick start into it oh you know? okay they, well we hope that's what that means that could mean i that. hope so I'm pretty sure that's what it means. Yeah. They're just letting me know that they're all here. And so what we did, what we found, what Jennifer and I found was the more that we did this, the more there became like a structure that we could access on the flip side. And that is our friend Luana Anders has a group of people, which we call a class, for lack of a better term, who have come forward and want to talk to us, or Luana herself has something specific she wants to talk about. So, Lou, the floor is yours. Why? She's not showing me all of this, but she wants to talk about all of this. I, have, I don't. Very good. Understand why? Very good. And that's yeah. all right. She's showing you Elvis, and so that's it. And to she's clarify, she feel Elvis, and she yeah. says Elvis, but she didn't show me Elvis. So maybe yeah, it's I... not like he pulled up a chair. Right. No. So let me hold on. And just for the audience, just so you know. When I get quiet, that's just me looking into things. Um, they're showing me another process. I don't need to see Elvis because a lot of people don't see it or yeah. they don't, they don't, and to feel Elvis. So, like I said in the beginning, I didn't see a picture of him like I normally do. I'd see a picture of him, but they just made me feel, they made me feel Elvis. They actually said Elvis, but you can get it in different ways. And I think that's what they're trying to say. The essence of Elvis or something that Elvis said. Right. And then 
Right. And now they're just, they're making me film Minneapolis. Is that where he's from? Where's the place that he's from? No, he's not. He's from, uh, he's from the South. Where's hey. his house? Where's his house that he has? Well, the house that he grew up in, which I happen to stumble upon, is in Tupelo, Mississippi. Mississippi. Sorry. Okay. Well, it's close to Minnesota. Sorry. I'm kidding. I'm sorry. I'm That's all right. I know. Listen, you're translating. So what yes. do you what do you want to talk about Elvis's house uh, in Tupelo? If that's what you want to talk about, we want to share with you how you can get it wrong too. Like I said, Minneapolis, because that's what I felt. But it's from it. You said it's Mississippi. Mississippi. It, it, they're both M. M, M. But they're saying not to get discouraged by that. They're saying that they were trying to show me a location. So if it's a location that you don't get the first time, then just. You know. No, and that's right. And most people have not seen this home. I just happened to pull over while I was driving into Tupelo to do an interview with somebody. And I'm looking at the map and then I look beyond the windshield and there's this big sign. It says, you know, this is the home of Elvis is where he was born. And I was like, okay. oh, wow. How Can we ask you about Prince. Cause okay, no well, Prince. Now that's the guy from Minneapolis. So you just popped in and he's like, I'm the one from Minneapolis. Um, that's so funny. Hold on. We are showing examples of how information comes and goes. And to try not to, like. To say, dismiss them. Dismiss them. And try not to feel like it's wrong. They're, they're showing how it's interpretation. They're using me as a guinea pig, showing me how it's interpretation. Interpretation. And so I think, and Lou, correct me if I'm wrong, what you're saying is when somebody gets an impression, let's say, and they're thinking suddenly Elvis is in their, con or an Aunt Betty or Uncle Pete is in their conscious field. Let's just allow that. And instead of dismissing it, oh, it must be Uncle Pete's birthday or something. Try to access what is it that Uncle Pete might be trying to tell you. Is that correct? Yes, but they're also saying um, they're also saying to try and ask more questions. Ask more questions, yeah. not just the fact that I, they're there. They're showing me like a try, like I got the information where I said uh, Minneapolis, and then I talked to you about it, and you're the one that referenced the right place. Um, but they're saying if they didn't have someone like you, Richard, to just dive in deeper, you know, to go, because a lot, okay, thank you. A lot of times I'll get the first couple letters and I'll just run with it. And they say that's, but I'm used to it. Dive in deeper to make sure. And they're also making fun of the fact that I'm not going to know the difference between Minneapolis. And I'm sorry, <laughs> please don't get mad at me for <laughs> there, Um that I might not know the difference between. <laughs> they, and so they showed me California, for instance. They showed me Los Angeles. They actually used smog, which is funny. That was very a long time ago. And then San Francisco, how they made me feel California, but San Francisco always feels a little bit colder to me, right? Right. Um, <laughs> I thought <laughs> last night in bed, I'm like, it is so hot. And my husband's like asleep. And he goes, it's global warming. I just started i just started laughing i'm like that's your answer it's global warming just that was turn funny. on the air conditioning well let me ask you so while we have prince and elvis sort of hovering and let's just say the idea of elvis and it's luana giving that but let's say does prince want to weigh in on anything because it would be we'd be remiss if we didn't ask him he was only told to give a location which i gave <laughs> for that's what he's saying hold on okay and right. he loves the music you've been playing. Like last week, you played something from him. Uh, or you yeah, to some, or some. Player? That's right. Well, there. I also people have been playing his music and sharing it, and so that's you know, okay. and you hear it. You know, you get to hear. He it. loves it. He says sometimes it's off key. Um, <laughs> what about that? Okay. I asked Elvis and I said, so is there anything you want to say? And he's like, he said, he goes, my son. And so I started looking for his son and then it occurred to me that his son is with him. Correct. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Yeah. He did pass oh, away. Let me. I deep. think that's his, uh, I'm sorry, his grandson. Grandson. Maybe? Yeah. Um, then we did, we, uh, we asked him I about that. that. Right. You know, I'm not going to remember. No, no, I know. And I don't remember who, exactly what he said about it. But. It's things that you're not thinking about. It's another way to show me 
now the way to show our audience, like I'm not thinking about his son or his grandson and he's, he's popping it into my head. So I'm now asking more questions. Like, why are you, why did you, why are you bringing that forward? Um, them, excuse me, Tim. Thank you. Because there always could be two people. And then he showed me Prince was behind him. And then, you know, like there always could be two people talking at once or two people giving information. And so, so not okay. And there, so what they're just to clarify, they're talking about process. So right. that idea of and, and they're using themselves as an example and only because they've been talking to us before. We've had conversation with them, but they're using themselves as an example of Uncle Pete and Aunt Betty people that you might want to chat with or that suddenly pop into your mind and and they're trying to tell you something and instead of dismissing it or instead of of trying to just parse it oh my gosh this is frightening aunt betty's here she died it's just ask aunt betty what is it you're trying to tell me or what do you want to show me is there something here that you want me to help access and then that idea of asking questions which is start the conversation and instead of dismissing the conversation, you start the conversation. Right. Something like that. Lou, is that what you want? You guys wanted to talk about today? She says it's complex, but we're trying to break it down for both sides. Um, All right. Well, let me give an example of something. A friend of mine is taking a class and they, they're helping her to do this kind of work where you're accessing things on the other side. And, she can't help but say always when she sees something, she'll say, you know, I don't know if this is true or not, or if I'm making it up or not. She always has to say that. Mm -hmm. But she got some very, first she got somebody's grandmother. Then she got like a, a Franciscan monk. And then she got a like an angel. Okay, these three, you know, it's a class she's taken where they're trying to help you. Yeah. And then she spoke to the person that she was working with and they said oh my gosh that's my grandmother you know and you described her to a t and as a matter of fact my whole life i've always had this vision of a of a franciscan monk in my life as my guide but then the interesting for me was this angel that that this person was visualizing and of course parsing trying to say well how could how, why am i seeing it what is that and but but without judging it saw this some a, you know, being that was like 10 feet tall and was really aware of the of the wings and how the wings had this huge flocking, you know, they were like very thick. And mm -hmm. and I said, well, you know, try not to think of that because we, you and I have had this conversation many times where we ask them, what does that represent? What are the wings? And they'll say speed of thought, travel, moving from one universe or portal to the next. So Luana, in terms of us asking questions, even to beings that we can't really conceive of or understand, is that a process or what do you recommend we do? To do exactly that, not judge it. Give what, you, give what you're seeing. It could relate to a grandmother, like for instance, they're saying it could relate to a grandmother that you always called your guardian angel. So they showed you an angel first and then right, right, right. So and then give what you're feeling. Right. Like and, give yeah. And focus on the information that they're they're giving you. Right. Which is almost always everything's and, gonna be okay. And they're ref yes, they're referencing no one's no one's coming in to try to hurt you. No one's gonna try to come in and give you bad information. There's plenty, like there's plenty of there's plenty of like I don't know what I want to say, like good information that's out there over your lifetime to pick and choose good information versus bad information. They might tell you something along the lines of, well, you, you had a premonition before I passed. That's not bad. They're just letting you know that you, you were right. Like you had that premonition. Good and that, um, but no one will ever try to hurt you or, or get you to hurt yourself or that's not coming from, the light that's not coming from and we've way. and we've we've talked about this a little bit where somebody sees a relative or somebody who passed away or they have a dream about them and it frightens them because it makes them think or associate mm -hmm. fear or they just remember the passing you know how difficult that was and so they get caught up in that but they don't allow that how difficult it is for them on the flip side 
to sort of slow their energy down to communicate. And a lot of times too, you can't control it. Like my dad showed me, like, you know, I knew that my dad was going to pass. I couldn't control it, you know? And, and then Kobe came forward, you know, his wife knew he, she always felt something, but she couldn't, she also couldn't, you know, control Verbalize it, it or control it. Yeah. Right. But, um, you didn't do any of those. You didn't make the person die. You didn't, you know, I didn't make my dad pass away because I didn't know. Um, he's, you know, he's laughing. He's like, I probably would have died of a heart attack if you saved me from pancreatic cancer, <laughs> you know? Um, show me again. Got it. Thank you. I asked Luana, I said, what, what is it that you want them to know? And she's like, we want the audience to know not to take everything so literally. So literal. Um, got it. Thank you. Signs don't necessarily mean it's going to happen now. It could happen, you know, you could, and they're pointing at me like I could, I've seen, I've had premonitions about things that didn't happen for seven or eight years, but it felt like it was going to happen tomorrow. And they're like, that's just wasted time. So if you get a, if you get a glance at something, just note it, just put it in your mind, just note it or send yourself an email. Um, can't predict death i mean she's not talking about that she's just talking about things in general yeah yeah and people do want to do that and they talk about it and think about it all the time you know i can tell you that it's not something well they're laughing like death happens to everybody (laughs) right but it's it's not something anyone has control over everybody has a couple of outs so yeah that might be one of their outs but doesn't mean they're gonna go Exactly. And and there's also this thing of, well, let's talk about that, Lou. I've heard people refer to the fact of uh, either balking or changing their free will to not leave. What's that process like? Is that is that possible? Can people have conversations with their guides and teachers and ask for a change of venue or a different outcome? That's interesting. Um interesting they just showed me past lives which just for the audience say past present futures from what i understand is happening right now our past lives are not really past lives they're happening simultaneously stay with me for a second so if you think something's going to happen to you here it could possibly be happening to you somewhere else so it makes it even more kind of nutty she's saying um she didn't use the word nutty i did um like she says it's impossible to predict well Lou I want to clarify that and and I so I'm hearing what you're saying what Jennifer's saying and what I'm getting out of that is it's not so much that they're happening simultaneously but we have the experience once we're outside of this plane of everything feeling like it's simultaneous so a, pre- a previous lifetime, even though it might have happened 200 years ago, feels like a few minutes ago. And so when you're accessing an event, some bad thing happens, and you suddenly you get a flash of some bad thing. It may have happened in a previous lifetime a few minutes ago was what it feels like. And instead of that, it's happening simultaneously, which is, you know, the multiverse, the parallel universe, et cetera, et cetera. What, I, what I've heard consistently is people saying well you wouldn't learn anything if everything was happening simultaneously how can you learn because then it's like oh I, I made that mistake in 1420 I'm making it again if we don't if we learn we get to we get to sort of advance let's just call it that anyway so Lou is there is that what you want to talk about or did you want to bring anybody forth to chat with us anybody in your VIP list that's been Hold on. Hold on. hankering I check. Hold on. Did you talk to Chuck's family? Yes, I did. Okay. Hold on. What did Chuck want to say? He says thank you. Okay, very good. So we're referring to Charles Grodin. Yeah. A great friend and actor. And it did come up recently that oh, he was I was I had this really wonderful dream about Chuck. Oh. Wonderful. That, and, you know, okay, so hold on a second. Don't say anything. For the audience. Richard and I have never discussed have this. Not discussed this. Hold on a second. <laughs> ah! 
He goes, if you think Richard talks a lot now, he goes, you just <laughs> dream state. He was taking me everywhere. He goes, trying to keep up with Richard was crazy. He just went, oh my God, super. That was hilarious. And they don't talk like this, by the way, but he's just showing me, zooming around. He goes, it was hard to catch up. He said he loved it, though. He showed you around the galaxy or something like that? Well, I'll just tell you, uh, in life, I would talk about something and Chuck would make a note while I was talking, like remind Richard not to talk so much, <laughs> whatever it was, whatever I was talking about. And then I'd find a, the note on his little notepad there, you know, to remind Richard. But yes, it was, it was a very unusual uh, construct of a dream because, you know, when you, you have a close friend who passed away and, and now you're seeing them, you know, you go through all the emotions of, oh my gosh, there you are, it's you. And but we were sort of traveling around and enjoying ourselves and the kind of laughter that we used to do. Having which a was ball. Having a ball. We just would laugh laughed until tears. Um, and did you and watch it? A, did you, were you in the audience watching a talk show? No, but, he, but I did send somebody because somebody asked me the other day, they said, how did you get Charles Grodin to be in your movie You Can't Really Love? And I said, well... Okay. And I told him the Merv Griffin story, how he'd taken me on Merv. And so I sent that clip. And now that guy's going to put that in his book, you know, talking about his career. But it, it, it's fascinating because Charles was, was such a generous guy. But, I, you know, it's also like you can't really call his family up and say, here's what he says. But you can say, I had this wonderful dream the other night. And, and this is what I saw and heard and experienced. And so that allows you to sort of open that door because if it's a dream, they don't have to think that you're actually talking to that person. You know what I mean? It's anyway. an easy way out. <laughs> it's an easy way out. No, but so Chuck, is. what do you want to talk about? No, he just wanted to stop by and just confirm to you that you got a dream about him. Oh, that's very good. Well, here's, here's the other thing. And this is, sorry, didn't mean to step off. This is a book that Chuck wrote, If I Only Knew Then, Learning From Our Mistakes. And yours I truly yours truly is is in here somewhere, Rich Martini. I wrote a chapter in this book and uh, I just, I realized I didn't have a copy. So I picked it up and we were sitting in the car waiting for dinner somewhere. And I read the chapter aloud to my family. And they were like, what? <laughs> so that was fun, you know, because Anything to do with Charles Grodin is fun. Let's put it that way. Right. And what? Interesting. He just showed another thing. So it made me, he made me feel like the elephant, like an elephant passed away. And then I'm like, did an elephant pass away? And he said, no, but the elephant is gone in the room. Like the, there's not a pink elephant in the room. And let me find out more. See how that worked, by the way? I I'm know like, what he, I, but see now that reference, I know what he's talking about. Okay. Can you so, but it, but uh, I will. So he said the elephant's gone. Is that what he said? Yes. Okay. Yes. So Chuck, with his great sense of humor, had this big estate in Connecticut, and he mm -hmm. had a roadway that he built where you could get on a golf cart with your kids, and you'd ride around through this forest, blueberries and raspberries, and then you'd he'd stop and he'd push a hidden button, and an animal would start talking from the trees and he had chimpanzees he had giraffes and he had an elephant okay but he would do the voice he had already taped pre-recorded the voice oh, of an english an elephant. elephant talking he had he had oh, the, that's so great and so the character would talk and say oh have you stopped by to see us in our little <laughs> zoo here i hope you're having a good time so what he means is it must have been, you know, over the years, they, they must have taken the animal oh. out or the animal <laughs> stopped working or something like that. Um, that and, is so sweet. That is yeah, so and sweet. Yeah, he had some guest uh, speakers, the guy who did Ozark. I can't think yes, of that. No, Justin Bateman. I was just Justin, thinking that. Okay, Justin. I love him. Smart All right. Guy. So Justin Bateman went up to Chuck's house and actually did the um, – Voice for the chimpanzee. Chimpanzee, the monkey. He mentioned that on Smartless at one point, I believe. Oh, did he really? Oh, that's great. Okay, well, yeah. it was just I mean, funny. You'd be on the cart, or we're driving around, suddenly Justin Bateman's up in the trees going, are you guys okay? You looking for something? Anyway. 
That's right. Well, that's really wonderful, Chuck. Uh, how do you feel about that? Is that was that time for? Dad, he just showed me hugging the elephant. That the elephant's up oh. there. <laughs> oh, the elephant's with him. And is that true of everybody, uh, Mr. Ed? He also had a horse. It was Mr. Ed. You know, the it was supposed. There's to... three of them, I think, that are up there. Okay. Probably the other ones they couldn't get down. Yeah, probably. Probably. Yeah, that's funny. So yeah, no, he had, and it was like you'd pull up to Mr. Ed a horse, and he was doing the voice of Mr. Ed, the you know the character, and but as a as an actor, like sort of put out the pasture. Yeah, you know, you're no longer do they call you anymore. You don't get in to do auditions. I was hysterical. It was hilarious, and I must have heard it a thousand times because my kids, you know, immediately. Get Chuck in the golf cart. Let's go. Let's go. We got to see it. That's so cute. That's so cute. He just, went like, this to... he just went like this to your hair. Okay. Well, I'll have to confirm that with his family to find out, you know. But I I believe it's already the case. And I, I bring it up because then they'll just feel There's something about 15 and there's something with three. So maybe there's three left. I don't know. Or there's three. And this is another burnt example. Like I'm being shown three. It could be there's three left. It could be that there's. The, that they have, you know, that, you know, he has three, it just, but he showed me 15. So. Yeah. We'll okay. See. Okay. That's very good. Well, I guess that's a good uh, question for you, Chuck. Are you any, are there any, any animals that you're with up there on the flip side? I asked him if it was a lion or a cat, because he looked like he was petting a lion and he said it was a lion cat. So I don't know if he had a cat, like, <laughs> I felt him being allergic to cats, actually. I think he was. I think Chuck yeah, was allergic that's to cats. He's making me feel that he was allergic to cats. So that would probably be something. But he had to show me a cat in order to show me being allergic to them. Oh, yeah. that's great. Um, no, that's all he wanted to do was give another example of how this works. All right. So I, I got a question for you, Chuck. Uh, and this one came from the peanut gallery. It happens to be here. Um, so, Chuck, on this weekend, we've got, we're have got we going to a memorial service for somebody. I won't say who it is, but um, people think that you might have been involved with the connection with this person. And I just wanted to ask you, is there any connection between yes. you? There is. He says yes. I don't know even. All right. And, and so how, did you orchestrate these two people meeting? Because the a close family member? Yes and no. He's saying kind of. Kind of. He's saying that um, he put somebody in the right direction that got him there. Okay. And so let me ask you, now that this person's young, young person is on the flip side, are you aware of him? Luana, are you guys aware of our friend? Name begins with the letter T. Yes, of course. They had a soft landing for him because I think your wife asked for that. Wow. Uh, and so, me, they're showing me your wife. Either that or your wife is. Oh, Sherry. Yeah. Sherry would be would be aware of that. So I'm. Uh, let's the just ask. The angel he, incarnate. Incarnate, by the way. Well, OK, let's, you know, That's listen. Right. And this is this is one of those things that you can do, which is I'm going to ask for this person to come forward. I'm just only going to tell you that his name begins with the letter T. OK. But, you know, what does he want me to say on Saturday? I'm morning? OK. I'm okay. I'm okay. 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 Give me a second. Sure, please. I felt all the heavy hearts in the audience, or all the heavy hearts there. Around his okay. family and all that stuff, yeah. And there's a lot of misconceptions about his passing, or there's a lot of, like, questions. That could be. That, a lot of questions about his passing, yeah. Okay. And he's saying that, stop looking into it, I'm okay. It just might hurt someone else. That's not that important, is what you're saying. Yeah. And but it might hurt somebody else because they they might have been involved with his you know passing. Let's put it that way. Right. Right. Nobody. He's taken. He says I have. I take responsibility for it. Um, I was like, it's almost like the wrong place, wrong time, or the wrong thing, or something. It's like eating food every day and then being poisoned. So it was either, which I, food is just a. No, no, it's just a metaphor. I understand. Okay. Do you know who I'm talking about, Jennifer? I, it feels like I've talked to him before, but I'm not sure. Briefly, you did. You did. and But I, I don't want to bring it up to because 
Yeah, whatever. I, 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 we're doing this thing where Jennifer's talking to somebody that I knew briefly that was oh, very important to a member of my family. And I'm going to his memorial on Saturday. And he I wanted visits, to... He visits her all the time. That's what she says. And she needs to believe it. I, I, I'm pretty sure she does. Okay. I think the, my only fear is that she believes it too much. So I, w let me just ask oh. Mr. T, what? Go ahead. The whole class came up like they were going to scold you. Like it's too much to believe about the other side, but I understand what you just said. <laughs> yes, you thank you. You're yes. right. Of course. I'm, I I'm kind of kidding. Hold on a second. I just don't want her to focus so much it just on makes that. it easy for him to talk to her because she does believe she he's like the whole class is envious they wish that everybody would have that kind of a connection right and it just it's not keeping her from hold on, a little bit he's like it's keeping her a little bit but it's not keeping her from a, from experiencing things right correct Very good because i'm trying to help her to explore but not in a bad way. Not <laughs> yeah, not in his path. Let's put it that way. Very good. Uh, I was going to just reference uh, yeah. your sense of humor and your you had a bunch of quirks that I thought were pretty hilarious. Go ahead. What else do you want to say? Okay. When we were talking about that, I was, all of a sudden I saw Manson. I'm like, wow, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm like, and then I got cult. It wasn't Manson, but they were showing me a cult. Um, hear me out. Sure. Sure. It's interpretation, of course. He's saying that he's not making a, you know, into a cult with him. Like it's nothing like that. I see. I yeah, no, I get that. I okay. understand. But he had to show me. He had to show. He had me. to show you that that's the dark to, side. Yeah, right. yeah, that's the downside but where you become also, so obsessed. If you see that. You know, if I would have seen that, if I did see that because I actually read Deborah Tate, who was Sharon Tate's sister on air, but I didn't know it was Deborah Tate. So, but Manson was alive at the time. But when you get something like that, again, when you see something scary, that was scary. I'm like, Whoa, what was that for? And then I felt the cold aspect. And then I felt some laughter like that. We're just showing it. It's yeah, not. right. It's just an example. Right. But you could see how you could just go crazy with it. Sure. This is what they're trying to say not to do. Don't like you think, show me. Is it a feeling like it's not literal interpretation of Manson? That's exactly what we started talking about today, which is don't take everything so literally, but allow that there's especially if you think of this as a giant play that we're all involved in. There's some comic things that happen if you look at it from that angle. Um, oh, I know you got to go in a few, but so anyway, I just before we do. Uh, um, back to with what you were saying. Yeah, oh, go ahead. He's like, make everybody laugh. Please make everybody oh, laugh. Oh, okay, at his uh, memorial. Yes, make I everybody will do laugh. That. He says there's so much material. He just showed me tons and tons of material. <laughs> like, focus on the laughter, my smile, my good looks. <laughs> like, uh, I think entertained. His and quirks. He was very entertaining. And, you know, we're, well, can I say, you know, it's always. You know, the best thing that he says, oh, he says, I know how loved I am. And he's like, that's all you could ever want when you leave here. Yeah, there's a wonderful quote from uh, from Keanu Reeves when he was on Stephen Colbert. And they said, how do you want people to remember you? And he said, uh, he, they asked him if there was an afterlife. He said, what I know is that when you pass away, you are loved by many. People miss you because you're loved. <laughs> I, I better get that quote straight before I try to say it again. All right. Well, thank you, Jennifer. I appreciate that. That was uh, was wonderful to say. I didn't want to impose my own, um, you know, friends and people that I know that have their own things. But it it is helpful to talk because we got right back to the thing we're talking about, which is don't take things too literally. And at the same time, open yourself up to hearing what people might have to say. Hearing and feeling. Hearing and feeling. Thank you so much, Jennifer. We love you. We appreciate your talents. And love, love okay. you. More. Love, love. We'll catch you on the flip side. Bye. Bye. This has been Hacking the Afterlife podcast with Jennifer Schaefer. 
more information, jenniferschafer.com, martinizone.com, or richmartini.com. Hacking the Afterlife documentary is available on Gaia.com via Amazon Prime.